I always like to encourage folk to look at a design first and kind of fathom out how it was put together. And often that is followed by the fact of thinking of which tools in the software you could use to do it. And then the third thing would be, well, I know I can use these tools or this strategy, but is there a better strategy to use or a quicker strategy or a more efficient strategy? So if we go through those kind of three approaches, when I look at this, um, what am I thinking? To me, if I have to break it down how this was done, it's probably a star area like this, but we started off with maybe a yellow one. If we look here, we've got this yellow on the inside and on the outside. So maybe this entire yellow area is a thick star. So that's the stroke and then the inside is, is clear. Okay, so if we picture this as just being a full thick yellow star and then on top of that yellow star, I put in a turquoise star, which is offset a little bit towards the inside. And on top of that, I put a red star, which is offset from the turquoise. Again, on top of that, I put in a black star that is offset. And then again, a yellow star. So that's where we get it. So literally, I'm going to have the yellow is one star, the black two, three, four, five. So this would be five stars put on top of each other with varying thickness. Okay, so I might decide to go with that strategy of saying, let me find five stars with varying thickness. So I'm going to switch this layer off here now and let me see if I can come up with something. Okay, so that would be the approach and I'm going to show you the tool that I want to talk about and how powerful that is. So if I come star number one, I'm going to make it transparent and we've got five strokes I'm going to work with. So I'm going to make this one say, let me make this 30, the thickness of the stroke. Okay, important that I need to do here is just make sure the mitre is set to about five or above uh, so I can have nice sharp edges. So I'll go in there and five. Okay, so I have this. So that's my starting point. I'm kind of visualizing where I'm going to go to. Now I can go on to that and I go control J. I'm creating a duplicate which is lying on top of this. I'm going to change the color to maybe a red color. So now the red one is overlaying the black one. I'm going to make the black one a bit smaller. So I maybe go to 25. The reason I'm typing in these values is so that I don't have to slide and kind of readjust, adjust. I'm just, well, maybe we'll go to 20. Okay, so you see now the, the red is now laying, overlaying this black one, but it's smaller. The stroke size is smaller. Then I do exactly the same, Control J and choose a different color, maybe that blue. And the stroke I'm going to make, uh, let's say 10. Okay, so now this blue one is set at 10 thickness. Just for you to notice that when I do do this, I prefer doing the duplication because when I do the duplication, it takes all the settings I'm using and move into that area. Um, however, there's one setting that I didn't set right from the start, which is scale to object, which I should set. So maybe I should go down to this one, click scale to object. The reason for that is when I'm done here now, if I want to size this object, the thickness of the strokes are going to stay thick, whether it's big or small. Whereas if I scale with object, it's going to proportionately scale. So technically, when I started with the first star, I should have also just checked this box, set the mitre there and then done the modifications. But that's no problem. I'm just doing it now. And we can set that there. Okay, then I'm going to just do one more. So I'm on this last layer. I'm going to go Control J. I'm duplicating it. So this one is right on top. I'm going to change the color maybe to a green. And then make the stroke, say, down to 5. Okay. So now we can see what I showed you earlier on. This is how I would get to it normally. So this literally means I, I created one, two, three, four layers with stars that are of different outlines. And their fill colors, all of their fills are transparent. That's why we're not seeing anything. If I want to put a fill color in here, I've got to choose the star that's right at the bottom, which is the thick black one, because then that fill color would come in here. But I can't switch on, on any of the layers on top's fill colors because they're going to 
overlay not only the the full over here but they're going to overlay some of these strokes also because it's lying all on top of each other okay so that's how we would normally go and I don't see anything wrong with that and we could manipulate that but let me show you what we we would prefer doing by using a feature called appearance okay so if I remove these here now let me just go and I'm going to delete that if I go to this one layer and I go to appearance now if appearance is not there you go to view studio and make sure the appearance box is checked it might appear here it might appear on your right hand side my preference is here if I click on appearance very interesting that happens the appearance panel shows me the stroke I'm using and the full so what's different from that to seeing the stroke and the fill on this area is when you look down in the panel this panel is extended long because there's nothing else below it you see it says add stroke and add fill and this is the power of the appearance panel you're using a single object and adding multiple strokes onto a single object or multiple fills now I'm not going to go into you know various depths of all the strategies that you can go into but just to show you the functionality of it so if we were wanting to get back to that design that I was showing you where we have this thickness now we can think in different terms we can have if I look at the layers palette we're having one star area and we are now going to manipulate the appearance which means we're going to add multiple strokes now the first thing to do like we've learned in the previous lesson is to make sure that our settings that we are going to use when we're duplicating extra strokes are the ones we want so that we we don't have to go back and re-edit them so I'm on the stroke here the first stroke if I click on the color area it gives me a color to alter so I don't have to click on here and then go to the color palette. it's all built in here then the one on the far right is a blend mode which literally means when you have a blend mode there has to be other stuff that you can put underneath it for it to blend and that's where the strength is also but we'll leave it on normal and this is the next one the point size interesting when you click on here it gives you the same stroke box there okay so here we're going to start off I've got my mitre let me the mitre is correct it's on five my scale with object is going to be checked that must be checked now the reason why this one is checked was because I used an object that I previously was showing you that we set scale because if look here if I switch this off you'll see the other one if I switch that off we come back in here you'll see that one's also off if I click this one you'll see this one switch here look at that okay because it's this it's same panel it's a duplicate panel that gets attached here to the appearance window so I'm happy with scale mitre and the size now I'm going to start off with maybe the 30 so I'll show you the the same sort of approach but we're all doing it inside the one object so I'll go 30 so there we get that and maybe let's keep the convention and change that to black so there we've got a stroke now I'm not going to duplicate the entire structure itself all I'm going to do is duplicate the stroke okay so if I go and I say duplicate I'm going to put the one that's on top now I'm going to make that a different color and I'm going to make it 20 okay so you're doing what appears to be the same there but at this stage now we have the two strokes but if I go back to layers we're still sitting with one object we're not now creating second third fourth fifth object so forth okay and you you might think look here there's not much of a difference but trust me when you get down granularly to edit the thing it does become quite quite more different so I'm gonna you can't go control J here if you want to just add you go there but if you add you're not going to take across any of these features then you'll have to reset that so what I like doing here in this example is to go and duplicate then I'm going to take the top one I'm going to change let me change color uh, to maybe that color and the point size I'm going to go down to 10 you can see where we're going to now I go and I duplicate that again the last one and this one we're going to choose maybe a yellow and size wise I'm going to drop the size down to five okay so there we've got to that object and what we're doing now we're sitting with 
one layer. Isn't that incredible? So we're doing what we had to do with four or five layers, just with one layer. Here now we also have other modification features besides this. Because now when I go, I, I literally can go and tweak these areas and have this object still functioning optimally like I would want to have it work. So it works like I had it the other time, but this is all just in one object now. Okay, just remember because of the shapes you're using, you might find you get to a point and then it, the objects sort of, if you look at this area, they might distort in some things. So just know that there's a limit as far as the shaping goes, not as far as the appearance tool goes. It's just the shaping features. Now, if I take this here and I go on top and I change the points, uh, maybe we pull that out a bit. I can change the points to how many points I want. Um, so this is extremely powerful. I'm sitting with one object and it's creating multiple areas. If I go with a fill and put in, let's say, green, that's where my fill object is. I could even go in and put a gradient onto that fill. If I do a gradient, there I have a gradient on the fill. And then I could put multiple fills on, but I'm not going to convolute the whole explanation here by dropping too many. But hopefully you see this is what we have. And then you could come here, select this area, and then come down to your, your styles and say add the style to selection. Okay, there we have the style. It doesn't pretty much look like the star. But if we go now and let's choose another object, let's put in uh, this cog. Okay, this thing is just pulling through presets that I've been using. I'm going to just clean that off by clicking that revert to defaults. Then I'll take the style we've just created and pop it on there and look at that. Isn't that incredible? So, and this is all made up of one object. Uh, let me go in and maybe put in a, a full color. I'm going to put in a simple object like this and then use the appearance and see how I can modify the full. So I'm going to just go and duplicate that one. In this fill, I am going to put in maybe a gradient of red. In this one, I think I'm going to go with a green gradient. But now you notice you can't see the green because the green's under that. However, if I go to the blend mode, I could possibly pull off a, a lighten. So it's using the red and a green in its blend. Okay, so... That's actually quite cool. Down here, i go maybe move the blend mode differently. So yeah, you could do those two. I could even go for a third one. I don't know what I'm going to do in the third one, but let's see. Um, maybe I come to what color could I get here? Maybe that purple. And let me see if I change this blend mode nice to color burn okay so you see where we're going to with this uh, we really can create unique things and again once i'm saying this is a single object so if you do this this is an excellent tool to create with appearance all different parameters and then you take that and you save it as a style so if we go there and save that as a style then i can come to pretty much a Another clean object. Let's see what we've got here. A heart. Oh, today is Valentine's Day in South Africa, the 14th of February. I assume it's the same all over the world, but um, I think Australia about done celebrating already and the US would probably start soon. But if I go to that style now and I click on there, look at that. And all of that is in one object style with strokes over there. So use appearance start to fiddle with appearance just understand that it's it's literally unlimited amount of strokes you can add unlimited amount of fills you can add and it's how creative you put them together that's going to give you a unique experience so hopefully this uh, benefits you with some part of your design happy valentine's day and god bless